This is not an electric bike yet, but it will be thanks to the switch kit. Yes, we're gonna turn this Nishiki Pueblo into an electric bike. First, we're gonna go through the assembly process. I'm gonna start a timer. We'll see how easy this is or isn't to assemble. Then I'll discuss pricing. Then we'll test the bike out, see what the 250 watt motor is capable of and probably not capable of. Then I'm going to give it to my friend. We'll talk about his use case for it. Then finally, yes, we'll do the switch bike thing. Roll the clip. This is a switch bike. Then I'll give you my concluding thoughts, but we're not there just yet. Let's get into assembly. So for tools, I have some side snips, probably need to cut some zip ties to clean everything up. Then I have some tire levers that will be helpful in removing the front tire. Then I have a tire pump to pump them up. I have our entire socket set. Then I have the ratchet tool from Pro Bike Tool, and we'll see what else we need along the way. All right, start the timer. First, we're gonna start with the front wheel here, and they recommend flipping the bike over, and that's what I'm gonna do. Now this is the new Switch Go kit and every bike is different, but this kit is going to be compatible with larger wheels. These are 26 inch wheels. It is compatible with rim brakes or disc brakes and we have rim brakes on this bike. So we're gonna disconnect those. I've got my 15 socket that'll make quick work of the wheel. Now that we've got the front tire off, I'm going to lower the pressure so we can remove the tire and put it on the new wheel. All right, next step, using the tire lever, I'm gonna get under the wheel, take the front wheel off. Bye-bye old wheel, and hello switch wheel. And the next step, of course, putting the front wheel on the front motor. I'd wrestle a little bit with the tire, let's put it on. They're gonna wanna reference switches install guide just to make sure you're doing everything properly. The motor cable though should exit to the sky with the bike upside down. So we've got torque washer, washer, and the axle nut. This is where you'll need the adjustable wrench to tighten this one down. I'll hit the other side though with my socket. This is an 18. Next, I'm going to attach the front brakes. Looks like we're gonna have to make some slight adjustments, but I'm gonna pump up the tire for now. All right, next step, pedal assist sensor, a battery and display, and yes, there's a throttle too, but I'm gonna make this a little bit easier on myself now that we got the front wheel installed and put the bike right side up. All right, here is the pedal assist sensor. It looks like we got the universal one. Just a few zip ties. Looks like we have the sensor there. And then it reads this while you're pedaling. Then it looks like we have all of these attachments here. So we'll see how it works on this bike. They come with these little inserts. I found that the small one works, but because I have a concave crank, I have to actually swap this so it conforms to the crank a little bit better. I'm gonna do that now. All right, so we have the pedal assist sensor affixed. I had to flip the arm for our concave crank. And then we have the retention pin here. This is going to keep the pedal assist sensor in place. Okay, got that attached. Next step, zip ties to the crank. The next step is the pedal assist sensor right here. And that's going to attach to your seat tube. I put a foam pad here because that needs to get close to those magnets to read it. All right, we've got the pedal assist sensor installed. If you didn't know how an electric bike worked, at least a cadence sensor electric bike worked before, you're going to know now after you install one of these kits. Next stop is the battery, which is starting to get to the fun stuff. And there's a look at the pedal assist sensor. This is the battery. It is the 281 watt hour. You can also get a 187 all the way up to 380 watt hours. And it is a 36 volt battery. We're going to go with the easy install right here. And they do include some protective tape in case you want to keep your frame looking nice. We're not going to worry as much on this old bike. That was maybe the easiest part of this install. Next, we have the harness for all the wires to connect to. So there's one for the display. That's an optional add-on. You have one for the throttle as well as the pedal assist sensor. And there's one for the brake sensor as well. And then of course you have the motor cable. That's the biggest one. We're going to plug this in at the front of the battery right here. So the next step is to wire all these cables nicely. All right, the moment I've been waiting for, I had to deal with some rain, but I'm really happy. The rain has stopped. 
I still have a rat's nest of cables, but I wanted to test it out before I zip tie these and make it look nice. Let's power it on for the first time. Got the display up here. And there we go, switch bike and pedal assist levels. Got the throttle on there, so I have to put this back. Let's see if it works. Pedal assist level one. See if this motor turns on. Rear wheel spinning, pedal assist, there it goes. Awesome, super quiet, 250 watt motor. Through the magic of editing, I'll have my editor put how long it took me. I will say the most complicated part of this, and it wasn't actually complicated, it just took some time, is getting that pedal assist sensor dialed in. Battery super easy to install, the motor went very smoothly. Just have to remove the stuff for the display and throttle. Overall, I would give it a five out of 10, maybe a couple hours. We'll see how close I am to that estimate. But with that, let's get these cables wrapped up and talk pricing. Let's talk pricing because the company has taken an interesting approach. First off, what did we buy this bike for? It was a hundred dollars. Of course, you don't have to take that into account if you already own a bike, but then you have the motor and the battery and all the components. For the 187 watt hour battery, that's going to be 349. To get the 281 watt hour battery, that will be 399. And to get the 378 watt hour battery, that's going to be $475. For us in the US, you'll have to add $50 for shipping. You'll need to add $30 if you want the display, which gives you five levels of pedal assist. And I imagine the throttle is going to cost extra as well. To get the best pricing, what I just talked about, that's going to be shipping in September, 2024. If you want it sooner than that, you actually have to pay extra. So we'll put the total cost of this whole setup with the bike on the screen. But price is meaningless if we don't know how the bike performs. So let's get into some first person riding footage. And just to show you throttle only on flat ground, I will spin my legs just to engage the pedal assist, just to show you that it can get up to 15 miles an hour on motor power alone. And there we go. All right, we're going to jump right into a hill climb. This is a smaller hill. It's not our huge hill that we test out all the electric bikes, but I wanted to showcase what this bike can do. So pedals this level five and I'm just ghost pedaling. I'm in the lowest gear and I'm just spinning my legs to engage the pedal assist on the bike and seven miles an hour, six, so what this kit is really made to do is to just give you a little extra boost to get up those hills. I did have to start pedaling a little bit as the motor slowed down. Now let's go through the various pedal assist levels. I wanna talk a little bit about the display. We've seen similar displays. We have pedal assist levels all the way up to five. So overall, very easy to use, but let's go into pedal assist level one. Just a note with this throttle, this is the EU version, which means I actually need to be pedaling for the throttle to work. Though it seems they have more of a walk mode. So when I hit the throttle, I can go at a couple miles an hour, three miles an hour. So that's just to get started. And again, the US version will have full access to the throttle no matter what. All right, pedal assist level one though. Now, given this is a 250 watt motor, it just gives you just enough extra boost. And actually it's plenty amount of power for anyone riding on flat ground. I'm gonna shift up here. Of course, the shifting is going to depend on what kind of bike you put this on, but I am just very easily pedaling and I'm already going 11 miles an hour. And again, this is going to top out at 15 miles per hour on the one I'm on, but the US version will allow you to get up to 20 as a class two, if you have the throttle. All right, pedal assist level two. And given it's only 250 watts, you can't really tell a significant difference between the pedal assist levels. Of course, the speed gives you a little bit of an idea, but you don't feel it as much as you do on some more powerful motors. And I do need to shift up and I'm easily already hitting 15, 16 miles an hour in pedal assist level two. So actually a surprising amount of power. Well, let's just do from a stop pedal assist level five and we'll feel that motor. 
about a quarter to a half pedal stroke for it to kick in. And I feel it ramp up nice and easily and it's gonna get me to that 15 mile per hour mark so easily. All right, and that was a lot of fun testing out this motor, but I think it's time to give it up and give this bike to my friend and tell you about his use case for it. And then after that, we'll get to my concluding thoughts on the Switch bike. All right, so this is Nick. And Nick, tell me a little bit about the use case for the, your new Switch bike. Yeah, I got this bike cheap used and my wife has another electric bike and I wanted to keep up with her. So I thought this would be a great way to keep up with them and get out there and ride. Yeah, super ideal. All right, I think the next step is we need to do the thing. This is a Switch bike. Conversion kits aren't new. There are actually tons of them on the market, but does the Switch kit live up to its sleek marketing? I don't think I'll ever forget there. This is a Switch bike. Marketing videos, even my kids are starting to run around the house saying it. Here are my thoughts though. The Switch kit stands out for a few reasons with simplicity being a key one. It feels like a more refined package compared to what you'd find on Amazon and the various kit sellers online. The front hub motor design makes installation easier since you don't have to worry about a rear derailleur, rear cassette, or compatibility with the rear dropouts. Plus, integrating the controller into the actual battery means there's one less component to manage during installation. The frame battery as well is designed with simplicity in mind, eliminating the need to jerry-rig a battery onto the frame like other kits. The strap attachments are super easy and overall installation is straightforward. If you're comfortable with basic DIY projects, say around the house, you can likely put on a switch kit. One of the main benefits is converting a bike you already love or finding an affordable way to own an e-bike. The switch kit costs $429 for the 187 watt hour version, offering a 15 to 20 mile range and $550 for the 378 watt hour version, which claims a range of between 45 and 60 miles with pedal assist. Even at these prices, you're unlikely to find a compelling e-bike, making this kit a solid option. I'm assuming because the company is based in the UK, they offer a 250 watt motor, which contrasts with the 750 watt motors commonly seen on e-bikes in the United States. This kit provides a gentle boost rather than significant power. If you need more power, other conversion kits at this price point like mid-drive kits are available. However, they often require more, let's call it creativity for installation. The switch kit is ideal for those who love their non-electric bike, but want assist for longer rides or quicker commutes. It's for those willing to pay for a well thought out package. The choices in components also means you'll have a relatively light e-bike as the largest battery size only only comes in at 5.7 pounds. I received one of the first kits to make it to the US, so widespread testing is still forthcoming. I'm all for getting more people on e-bikes, and this is an excellent option for those who don't mind a small project. If you're interested in this kit and want us to do a follow-up with Nick, say in a year, let me know in the comment section. There of course will also be a link to Switch's website down in the description. I'm curious to hear what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.